So our planet has lost two-thirds of its entire wildlife in the last 50 years. And we, as you all probably know, are in the middle of the sixth mass extinction event for our planet. And this mass extinction event is not caused by a meteor hurtling towards our Earth or natural causes. This is caused entirely by us. And even more shockingly, Australia currently has the highest rate of mammal extinctions of any country in the world. And these are some of our beautiful animals that are at risk, just a handful of them. We've got things like the beautiful spotted quoll, which I'll talk a little bit about at the end. We have the mountain pygmy possum, hairy-nosed wombats. All of these species are predicted to go extinct within the next 10 years, and that is because of human impacts to their environment. And we've already lost some of our most incredibly unique species, like this pig-footed bandicoot that you can see on here, and then my personal favourite, the Tasmanian tiger. This incredible animal was a marsupial, but it looks almost exactly like a dog. But it had a pouch, it raised its babies in a pouch, just like a kangaroo or a wallaby or any other marsupial. And the thing that made it so important and so incredibly unique for us is it was an apex predator animal, one of those animals that sit right at the very top of the food chain. So what if I told you that this does not have to be the end for these species? We don't have to have this sad end to the tale of the Tasmanian tiger or the pig-footed bandicoot and all of the species that are currently spiralling down towards this extinction fate. We can actually reverse, and we can do this now with genetic technologies. We are incredibly good now at being able to go into museum specimens, sequence the DNA from animals sitting on the shelves in there from these amazing collections, and then using that material, we can actually re-engineer in diversity to those populations we can reinvigorate species on the brink of extinction, and we can actually use this technology to bring entire species back. And this is the field of de-extinction science, and this is what I work on. And so when I tell people I work on de-extinction science, they often come up to me and they're like, I've seen a documentary about this. <laughs> in fact, there's a whole series of these documentaries. <laughs> and it had that Attenborough guy in it. So there's obviously a big difference between bringing something back that's been gone for 60 million years and was a natural extinction event to bringing back animals that have more recently gone extinct. And I think it's not just a good idea to think about bringing animals back like the Tasmanian tiger. It's actually essential if we want to rescue our planet and our biodiversity crisis. We are going to have to embrace these technologies. We're going to have to go back into the past to repair and fortify our future future moving forward. So this is the footage of the last Tasmanian tiger that ever lived. This is taken in Hobart Zoo. It met an incredibly tragic end. It was left out by the keeper one really cold night in Hobart. He forgot to open up its enclosure so that it could go back and sleep. And as you can see there, it was just in an open cage on a concrete slab, and so it was just too cold and the animal died. And this is one of a growing number of species for which we know the exact moment that animal ceased to exist on our planet. And this was September 7th, 1936. And that actually marks World Extinction Day for our planet, is the day that the thylacine died. So it's an incredibly powerful message. What was so important about this animal is that it was that apex predator. And we know those apex predators are the absolutely most important, key, fundamental part of any ecosystem. They're even more important for us in Australia because we don't have any other mammals that are apex predators. This was it. This was the only one that we had. And we know that once you lose those apex predators from an ecosystem, it erodes that entire ecosystem. And there are some really fantastic examples of this. This has been very well documented in the United States in Yellowstone National Park, where they decided to eradicate the wolves in 1926 because of a lot of tourism that was happening in that area. 
Once they removed the wolves and they hunted them out of Yellowstone Valley, that whole ecosystem went into collapse. There was an explosion of the deer populations. They were eating all the small shrubs. That led to land erosion that then washed off and polluted the rivers. The beavers left. The river actually changed the way that it ran through Yellowstone Valley as a result of the loss of the wolves. And then they could see this catastrophic impact that the removal of the wolves have had. So 70 years later, 1995, they decided to reintroduce the wolves back into Yellowstone Valley. And in just 10 years, that entire ecosystem reformed. They had the bears coming back into the valley, the beavers came back, and that river even regained its natural course through the valley of Yellowstone. And there are unbelievable documentaries about how wolves can change rivers from this, showing how one apex predator animal can actually engineer an entire landscape and all the species that live within it. And we're seeing this same thing now happen in Tasmania with the loss of the Tasmanian tiger. There's been explosions of kangaroo and wallaby populations. They're the equivalent to the deer in this scenario. And they are eating all the vegetation, their landscape is eroding, and it's having massive impacts on all of the species in that system as well. Another key role that apex predators play in an ecosystem is controlling disease. And without an apex predator, what happens is heavily impacted animals like this poor Tasmanian devil that you're seeing here with the devil facial tumour disease persist in the population. There's no animal there to remove a sick animal from the population and to eat it and get rid of it. So this animal persists and it will persist until it eventually dies from that disease. And the entire time that it's alive in that ecosystem, it's spreading that disease from animal to animal. And that is why the Tasmanian devil was almost gonna go extinct from this devil facial tumor disease is because we took the thylacine out of that environment. So we know that the only way to fix that ecosystem in Tasmania now is to actually put the Tasmanian tiger back. That is what we've got to do. So how does de-extinction science work? This is de-extinction in 30 seconds or less. So <laughs> what you need to do basically is uh, sequence the entire genome of your extinct species, in our case, the Tasmanian tiger, every single little bit of code so you know how to build your thylacine. And then you use that to look around nature for the closest living relative of your extinct species. And that for us is a small mouse-sized marsupial called a fat-tailed dunnart. Once you've identified, Paul, don't, don't body shame our donuts, please. <laughs> it's only the tail. <laughs> but once you've identified that, you, you have to then re-engineer your thylacine. So we compare both of their sets of DNA and they're only 0.1% different. They're 99.9% .9 the same. So if you edit that 0.1% that is different, you've recreated then a thylacine cell and you can use modern cloning technologies like we made for Dolly the sheep to turn that cell back into a living animal and hey presto, there's your thylacine to put back into the landscape. Yeah, great, right? <laughs> So this is our little uh, surrogate genome, but also surrogate mum. So again, a few of you might be thinking, hold up here, Andrew. I can see a potential problem. <laughs> <laughs> but this is one of the miracles of marsupials is they all give birth to absolutely tiny babies. So the birth of a baby thylacine is about the size of a grain of rice, and this is a baby dunnart that you can see on the screen here, and they were equivalent in size. So that means even that tiny little mouse-sized dunnart can give birth to a baby thylacine, and then we can just feed it milk and hand rear it to put that animal back. And so I'm working right now with an incredible team of scientists in the US and Australia to re-engineer that thylacine and have it back in the very near future to put back into our landscape to save that ecosystem in Tasmania. Thank you. <laughs> but wait, there's more. That's not all. <laughs> So there's so many other applications of, of de-extinction science, and this is just one quick story for this incredibly beautiful animal, the northern quoll. These are still alive, but they are going extinct because they eat toxic cane toads, and the invasive cane toad that we brought to Australia is killing these species, and these are predicted to go extinct within the next 10 years. 
But where cane toads naturally exist in South America, the animals that evolved alongside of them for hundreds of thousands of years all have a natural resistance to cane toad toxin. So we've been able to identify in their genome precisely what it is that gives them that cane toad toxin resistance. And it's just one bit of code in their three billion bits of code that they have in their genome. So armed with that, we've actually been able now to engineer qual cells that have that cane toad toxin resistance in them. We've been able to show that that makes them completely resistant to cane toads. And we're now working through the process of creating our first live animals that will be cane toad toxin resistant. Once we've done that, this not only saves the qual from extinction, but then they can actually eat bloody cane toads, which <laughs> will help. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> and this will hopefully help our wildlife for the first time actually fight back against some of these invasive pest species, which I think is my favourite bit of the whole project. So they're just two short examples I've been able to give you in my time today of how de-extinction science is so important for our planet moving forward. I truly believe we have to embrace this technology if we want to undo the mistakes of the past, go back to the past, learn from it, and use that knowledge to rebuild a healthier future for our planet. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>